with, genomics was really a way for me to kind of target where that support needed to be and in turn saving me a lot of time, money, frustration. Um, I, I hope your, it sounds like your experience was really similar. Yeah, and I, I think to your point, Ryan, uh, I think that's where functional medicine gets a bad rap is you, right. think, you think, hey, my insurance isn't, isn't going to cover it. I'm going to be out of pocket a lot of money. Right. Um, I'm going to be on these supplements, all these different expensive lab tests. But uh, nutrigenomic testing for me, like it was very pinpoint. It wasn't too expensive. I think it was $300 when I took it. And I was only on a couple supplements. It wasn't going to break the bank. And I think it was on only one prescription from Dr. Stewart at that time. And maybe CBD oil as well. Yeah. But and it was just, you know, the, the right amount of supplements. It wasn't killing me. I was still taking my magnesium, of course, but um, it helped me so much. It helped me so much. And, um, you know, I work with functional medicine providers all the time. And I do see right. like those, all these supplements coming out and patients think they need all that stuff. And maybe they do, but, um, you know, maybe if it's getting more targeted, more precision, like with genetic testing, finding exactly, Hey, if you have a VDR TAQ gene, which we're going to talk about for vitamin D and your vitamin D is always low. Well, Hey, maybe that means that we just need to supplement more. Maybe we need to up your magnesium intake, you know, support that gene as if, yes. as, as, as how you say it. So, um, and I think those of us that are in health and we're providing health and coaching for others, you know, we're always, we're always our best test subjects and we're always experimenting and wondering why trying to figure out the root of these issues. And so I think like your case, similar to mine, I was really stumped, you know, why could I not get better? I was helping all these other people get better. And, and I was still struggling with my own health. And the fact that this changed like you is so quickly for me, I was feeling better probably within four weeks. And it, I just, I really learned why this was so helpful. And once I started seeing this help other people over and over and over, I was, I was all in. I just knew that this had to be part of, of my coaching platform. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I, cause I had tried the rheumatologist. I tried the specialist, you know, everyone's taking x-rays on my hands and all this stuff. And within two weeks, like I was making a fist, I was able to run and able to touch my toes. My wife couldn't believe it. So she went straight to Dr. Stewart as well. Yeah. Our, all, of our, all of our kids have been over to that office, which I love because it's very preventative and saying, hey, yeah. they, have, they have certain genes, right? If, if you don't, I don't even know if you should bring up the word vac vaccinate your child, but you know, there are certain genes that people turn on inflammation different than others. And so if you can support them, you make the decision as a family and as a team with your provider, you can say, Hey, we can, we can prevent maybe a lot of these things. If we maybe space out right. the vaccines, if we, if that's what you choose to do, you know, you can make an educated decision. That's just very, a very smart decision for your family, which I love. And that's what I always say. If somebody had tested me as a kiddo, I probably could have avoided a decade of struggling with my health. So I think that that's another beautiful thing about genomics. You can test at any age because you only have to do it once in life. These, genes are going to be the same from the day you're born to the day you die. There's one test. This is just a good map. Yes. I love it. It's only one test. You do it once. You got to save your results because you might lose it, but you don't have to do it ever again. Right. If you right. know that you are very gluten sensitive, or maybe you have the celiac gene or the HL HLA DQ, uh, I think it's four and eight. Is that right? Two, two, two and eight, eight. Mm -hmm. two and eight, which our son has. Right. And so we're doing everything we can to avoid gluten as much as we can. It's yeah. hard, hard for these kiddos, but you know, we can prevent possible celiac disease later on in life, save right, our kid from a lot exactly. of harm, a lot of discomfort, a lot of pain. You know, I think that's a, it's a huge, huge critical piece in the puzzle. Yeah. I think when you get older, you sometimes figure out a lot of these things that you, what works for you, what doesn't, right? If you're, if you're caffeine sensitive, if what affects your sleep, what affects your mood, but right. still when you're younger, I think it has a huge impact. And I think it does with everybody anyways, because- and that's what's so interesting about the, the gluten genes. You know, a lot of people tell me, oh, well, I don't have stomach issues. And they kind of haven't realized yet that the gluten gene really is an autoimmune condition. It's not, it's not a, just a GI issue. It can present as a number of things like mood disorders, anxiety, depression, OCD, um, sometimes GI issues, but we're seeing a lot of like non-GI celiac related autoimmunity in things like uh, psoriasis. Thanks for listening to the Fredrickson Health Show. This podcast is for educational purposes only and not intended to be used as personalized medical advice. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss a single episode. While you're at it, leave us a rating and review. Follow us on social media and subscribe to our email newsletter for more information.